my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today I have a surprise gift from a friend who tried but failed to be anonymous. The pen he sent me has been around for a couple of weeks but was just released this week by Amazon in Canada. It is the Amazon Basics fountain pen and is only $9.99 US with free shipping on Prime on Amazon. Let's unbox this pen and take a closer look at it right now. Okay, so here we are with the unboxing. This is the Amazon Basics fountain pen, and it was sent to me by my friend Ron. He was expecting to remain anonymous, and so he just left a note from a pen pal, not knowing that they would put his name actually on the package. So when I called him up and I said, thank you for the pen, he went, what pen? Ah, uh, so let's open this package up and see about the Amazon Basics. So we have a rigid cardboard box with no markings on it. Looks like your standard coffin. And there we are. So we have a booklet, refillable fountain pen in many languages. This is how to operate your fountain pen. Use, care and cleaning, feedback, how to use a cartridge, and more languages. And here we have the pen. So there's two cartridges here. And this is in a rigid soft foam. Really very nice presentation box, considering that this is $9.99 US. That's very good. This might be the one of the first in Canada, though. And here we have the pen. And we see Amazon Basics branded on the clip. Snap cap, metal section, and it posts fairly securely. A little bit back heavy. And we have a nondescript number five size nib marked M and plastic feed. And there is a cartridge in there. It's gonna take a bit to get it out. There we go, got it out. So it comes with a total of three cartridges and the cartridges are just branded Amazon Basics, but these are, I'm going to check it with my micrometer, but I believe these are Jinhao standard Chinese cartridges. They won't be exactly standard international. They're slightly different, but if you get the Jinhao branded cartridges, they will fit these because these are identical. So, I think what we'll do with this pen is clean it out and put a cartridge in and come back and take a look at the parts and features, do some size comparisons, some measurements, then I'll do a writing sample and write with it for a while and talk about what I like and what I don't like about this unexpected, very interesting, fountain pen. Thank you, Ronnie. Okay, so I'm back after taking the pen apart and cleaning it with water and a drop of dish soap. 
I took a photo of the pen in pieces to show that it comes completely apart. As you can see here, the nib and feed come out of the section. They actually came out pretty easily. The nib and feed collar, however, does not unscrew as far as I can tell. I gave it as much force as I was willing to apply. I compared the Amazon number no. 5 nib with a couple of other spare number no. 5 nibs I have, and the Amazon seems to be a pretty standard number no. 5 size. Both this generic number no. 5 uh, and the Moon Man number no. 5 I have on the right here. Uh, that came out of my Moon Man M2. Uh, this one is a fine, and I believe that generic one is a medium. Both of these nibs fit easily into the section with the feed. I see no reason why most standard number no. 5 nibs wouldn't fit in this pen. This is good news because you can get a variety of number no. 5 nibs and a broad range of line widths, from extra fine to broads and stubs. I have number 5 nibs in both my Moonman M2s at the moment. One has a 0.7 millimeter stub and the other has a 1.1 millimeter stub. So you should be able to turn this pen into almost any kind of writer you wish. So let's look at the parts and features of this pen. This is a lacquer coated metal pen, probably brass. Starting at the top we have a plain polished chrome finial with attached clip that is springy and very usable. And the clip goes all the way to the top of that finial, so the pen will disappear in deeper pockets. And the clip has Amazon Basics stamped into it. The cap tapers up to a chrome cap ring, then there is a very small step down to another ring on the barrel, and the barrel is straight for most of its length and then tapers down to a double grooved chrome end finial. The cap pops off easily and recaps with a nice satisfying click and comes off to reveal a tapered metal chromed section which tapers sharply towards a small ring at the top of the section and then the nondescript number no. 5 nib with just an M on there for medium. And there is a look at the plastic feed. The cap posts deeply and very securely. It back weights the pen just slightly, throwing off the balance just, but it's not uncomfortable to write with, with the pen either posted or unposted. Unposted it is plenty long enough for comfortable writing. In fact, I write better with this pen unposted than posted, but either way is possible. The section unscrews. The pen did not come with a converter, but it did come with three black ink cartridges marked Amazon Basics. These are close to standard international cartridges, but not quite. Here's the standard international right next to the Amazon Basics and you can see that the the nipple on the standard international is shorter than the one on the Amazon Basics. Regardless, I was able to insert a standard international cartridge into this pen without any difficulty. It did leave a little bit of a gap there. Um, I haven't tried it with ink but I don't expect you'll get any bleeding out of there. It feels fairly secure. The Chinese standard cartridge also fits in the pen and actually fits even more securely without a gap. If you place a standard international cartridge into the section, you can place a second cartridge in the barrel and screw the whole thing down. So you can run with two cartridges in the pen piggyback. You can't find these Amazon Basics cartridges anywhere, uh, but I do believe these are Jin Hao. So the Jin Hao standard cartridges that you can get very cheaply uh, on eBay and I believe on Amazon um, will work with this pen. 
I was also able to get one of my spare converters to work in this pen. And it has a similar nipple and shoulders. Similar, not exactly. But it fit nicely. And so I was able to ink the pen up with a converter. That converter came out of a Chinese pen, but I'm damned if I know which one. Well, God's name did you get these from? Henley. Well, where did he get them? Well, I asked him that. What do you say? Don't ask. <laughs> now let's look at some measurements, some size comparisons, and I'll come back and do a writing sample with this pen. Please stay tuned to the end of the writing sample where I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like about this pen. Okay, we're back with the writing sample portion of the review. Normally I would have chosen an ink that somewhat matches the pen or just use the supplied cartridges, but I was anxious to try out this new ink that I've just received from Bauer Inks in Toronto. This is a Robert Oster ink named for our Claudia from the Pen BBS Facebook group, Taste the Rainbow, and is called Asterkiza Rot. And Rot is German for red. I got a lovely shipment of inks from Claudia yesterday, which included the Asterkiza Rot, as well as Robert Oster Fire and Ice, some Asterkiza Olive, and Bauer Inc.'s own Queasy Ink Azure Number no. 5, which I'll feature in my Moonman M800 pen review tomorrow. In addition, I got a coloring test book, which has SF Pen Show 2019, as if I was there. It's a keepsake of my memories from that trip. And I got some Robert Oster test cards. And a couple of Tomoe River notebooks. I'll feature all of these products in an upcoming video. So on with the writing sample. I'm going to write with it unposted. This is the Amazon Basics. And this is a medium steel nib and the ink today is Asterkiza Rot. I've written with this pen for about a week and I've not done any work on the nib at all. This is exactly how the pen came out of the box. Let's check the wetness. As you can see, it's very wet. And let's listen to it right. Very, very smooth. I was very surprised at this, how it came out of the box writing so smoothly. In fact, it's so smooth, it almost feels like it has no feedback whatsoever. And as to line variation, that's no pressure, a little bit of pressure. It, uh, doesn't give you much line variation, but uh, it's not as stiff as some steel nibs.
And as to reverse writing, it's uh, sharp, but it works fairly well. And some quick writing. That feed keeps up very, very nicely. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, there are a number of things to like about this pen. The first is the price. At $9.99 US and free shipping with Prime, this is an eminently affordable fountain pen. The second is the nib and how it writes. This is as smooth as any nib I've ever written with. It's almost too smooth. Third, I like the way the pen posts deeply and securely, even though it does back balance it just slightly. And I also like that it will take standard international cartridges and piggyback an extra cartridge in the barrel. As to what I don't like about the pen, well, there are a few things here too. I don't like the very, very slippery tapered section. It's very slick and it tapers down to very, very narrow for me. And my fingers keep sliding down to the narrowest part of the nib, which gets me even closer to the page. And that's the other thing, this number five nib, because it's so small, I'm even closer to the page. And with my grip, I'm finding that I have to write with it back here a little bit. And then I'm into that little bit of a step. You don't feel it as much as the Pilot Metropolitan. I have to say that about this pen. Let's look at the Metropolitan, which is a $30 pen. But it has a plastic grip, which is less slippery and has a little bit of a flare there. It's about as narrow, but a very sharp step up, pronounced step up, that uh, keeps me from liking this pen at all. I know people love this Pilot Metropolitan. This one doesn't have that pronounced step. And also, I'm not keen with the overall look. It is black and chrome. It is very basic. Well, that's the name, isn't it? Basic. The final thing I don't like about this pen is that it is Amazon. If you don't want to hear a rant, then click away now and run away, coward. Oh, oh, I see. Running away, eh? You yellow bastard! Come back here and take what's coming to you! Now, I haven't got a hate on for Amazon. Yes, they are monopolizing the world and putting brick-and-mortar stores out of business, but that is as much the brick-and-mortar shop's fault as Amazon's. A small aside here by way of illustration. I was shopping online looking for books for my wife for her recent birthday. As a Canadian, I avoided Amazon and went to our Canadian online bookseller, Chapters. It's also called Indigo. I found four books that were perfectly in line with Wynn's tastes, and bonus, they were on sale. So I collected all the titles, checked online to see if they were in stock locally, and drove over to my neighborhood chapter's brick-and-mortar shop and found the titles on the shelf. I went to the checkout counter with all my books and found that they were all full price. I showed the cashier the online prices and was informed that chapters does not price match with chapters online. No! Yeah, you heard it. My choices were to pay 20% more and take the books with me or just press checkout on my phone app while I'm staring at the cashier and have them delivered for free the next day. I chose the next day. This happens with brick and mortar pen shops as well. You may remember that my wife bought me this beautiful Pilot E95S for Christmas. Well, actually, she gave me the ability to pick out my pen. I loved everything about this pen, and although I could get it the next day from Amazon online, I called my local brick-and-mortar pilot dealer and inquired about the pen. The clerk told me she needed to contact her pilot distributor and get a price and would get back to me. So silly me, I'm waiting by the phone for her to call me back in a few minutes. I'm waiting! After waiting six hours and it got close to the store's closing time, I called back. I said, anything on that pilot? I naively asked. 
Oh, God, no, she said. I won't be able to even speak to my rep until the new year, but I'll call you when I get an answer. Great. I hung up and ordered it on Amazon, and I got it within two days. I never got a return call from the shop. Now, what has this got to do with Amazon Basics? Well, just this. There's a lot of derision aimed at Chinese-branded fountain pens on the Internet, on Facebook, on the Fountain Pen Network, on Reddit. The pen I'm reviewing tomorrow, the Moon Man M800, is catching a lot of this vitriol and self-righteousness. There are comments on my YouTube channel that I left up, and one says, quote, I hate Chinese knockoffs, shameless copycats. And the other one says, COVID-19 from China. I don't hear this kind of hatred flung around about Amazon Basics. Perhaps it is because it's a good old American brand name. Amazon. Great pen, 10 bucks. Available in the U.S. of A. Made by Jinhao in China. So yes, this pen is pretty good for a $10 pen. It writes smooth out of the box and is inexpensive and readily available. But here is another great pen that writes well and comes with a number 6 nib and is made by the very same company as the Amazon Basics and is half the price, $5 US, the Jinhao X450. Here are a couple of more for your edification. The Bauer 388. $2.59 U.S. The Bauer 051 $2.75 Just some food for thought. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you didn't like this video, please give me a thumbs down because YouTube counts them as pluses for my channel. <laughs> and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified when future videos arrive like tomorrow's hot episode on the horrible ripoff of the Leonardo, the Moon Man M800. Until then, that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.